uh, as I said, I'm going to talk about digital populism uh, with um, with emphasis also at some point in discussion on uh, this information aspect of their performance. So um, I think that we are by now uh, quite familiar with uh, mm, with uh, the 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 uh, one of the leading definitions of uh, populism, which basically argues that. Uh, populism is a thin ideology that differentiates between corrupt elite and um, honest, honest um, you know, people. So uh, populism necessarily involves um, the people and uh, conflict between the people and uh, the el elites. Populist uh, ideology very often includes um, third dimension, and that's the existence of the dangerous others, which left populists usually find among financial institutions, banks, corporations, etc., while right populists identify dangerous others very often amongst minorities, migrants. Both of these uh, uh, populist groups uh, usually target uh, European Union, so this may be the case with both uh, left and right populists um, uh, in Europe, especially. And there is also centrist populism, uh, populist uh, options um, across Europe and the world who uh, do not have, who do not identify uh, uh, particular dangerous others. So this is the definition um, I depart from. And there is now a um, uh, piling amount of research and um, and um, and studies that argue that, of course, digital technologies um, are to blame or play a very important role in a uh, rise of populist options. Uh, although there are now also very, um, uh, uh, very um, a sound arguments that uh, this relationship is not that straightforward as uh, sometimes or too often is being suggested. However, there is enough evidence to claim uh, that basically uh, digital technology uh, technologies play an important role in a rise of populism. So um, this this also affects, of course, the, the the practices, campaign practices that usually involve, as I said, digital technologies have been affecting also affecting also um, uh, uh, style of election campaigns and practices of election campaigns of mainstream politicians, most notably in terms of narratives, communication styles, and of course, uh, campaign strategies. So populists have, and this is the argument that I also have here, um, in um, very importantly been affecting um, campaign practices all over the world, and uh, some of their strategies have been then um, adopted also by uh, mainstream um, or politicians. One of the most important uh, segments that have also um, uh, spilled over to mainstream campaigning is the use of uh, digital, digital um, uh, technologies. In this, um, uh, this uh, area of research came to be known as digital populism or tech of populism, so these different um, different ways in which populist uh, politicians use digital technologies to um, to appeal to their supporters and to mobilize their support. Uh, commonly addressed features of this digital populism are, but um, uh, uh, are the main, but not the only. Uh, the main that I'm going to emphasize today is first unmediated nature of social media, which basically allows populists to communicate with their supporters direct, directly while bypassing the filter of mainstream media. And uh, we are all familiar with the uh, Trump effect in that respect. Uh, connected to this is, of course, the agenda setting of, uh, uh, effect of uh, social media. Then, uh, aspect that is uh, somehow uh, maybe the least researched but incredibly important especially with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, new rising um, options and new parties and that's the organizational potential of the internet um, that enables political newcomers to build their party structure implement decision making procedures and mobilize supporters some of the uh, most um, 
um, uh, uh, important evidence has uh, come from Spain in this respect, as you know, and since we have um, our dear uh, colleagues from Spain, um, I, um, I need to emphasize that, and we have lots of very good papers about how internet was used uh, for the rise of different populist options in Spain and other countries, of course. And finally, uh, micro-targeting, a very important aspect of um, digital populism, uh, which I'm also going to talk about today in, in, Croatian, in Croatian case. So about Croatia, very briefly, uh, for our dear um, uh, colleagues from abroad, Croatia, uh, since its independence in 1990, has been governed interchangeably by two major parties, Conservative Croatian Democratic Union and a leftist Social Democratic Party. However, since 1915 especially, the country, so in the last five years basically, uh, the supremacy of these two um, of uh, these two parties of their duop duopoly has been challenged by a number of uh, populist options, uh, most notably by um, by um, uh, four of them. First is the Bridge, the party that was uh, that emerged nationally in two, nine, uh, 2015, and also Human Shield, another populist uh, party that um, uh, also nationally emerged in parliamentary elections in 2015. A candidate, Mislav Kolakusic, a very important figure I'll talk about, uh, who won um, uh, a mandate, a seat in 2019 uh, European elections. And finally, so-called Homeland Movement, um, which also gained a respectable number of seats in 2020 parliamentary elections. All these options uh, did not exist basically in Croatian national politics until five years ago. And as you can see, in the last five years, it has been quite crowded in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, populist options who uh, came to, um, to uh, play certain uh, roles role in uh, Croatian politics. So briefly about these actors, Zid, um or Human, Human Shield's name of in, in uh, translation in, uh, in English, uh, is basically being represented by these two guys, uh, quite young when they first started, started and they uh, rose uh, their main uh, forte, their, their main um, uh, rhetoric was uh, strongly populist. Uh, ever since they first appeared on a political uh, stage. Uh, the left guy uh, that you see here sitting is a very, um, is the uh, eccentric um, architect of the party, a very controversial figure, uh, anti-vexer and conspiracy theorist. He basically designed the party and the guy uh, who is sitting um, right of him he, he, he was the, uh, the leader of the party, but the main, main brains be, be, uh, behind the party has been uh, Ivan Pena, the guy sitting on the, on the left. Uh, he's basically, um, uh, all their activities have been uh, primarily aimed at attracting media attention and increasing public uh, visibility. Um, and um, Pena, uh, he's probably been the most successful in that respect because he strategically branded himself as a, as a, as a showman and a fan terrible of Croatian politics. He has been uh, tactically all the way using uh, different stunts to attract the media attention and enchant his uh, supporters. He was being dragged from the parliament for many, uh, on uh, many, many occasions for interrupting proceedings. And every time he was streaming it online, he a delivered pizza at the parliament benches, etc. So he's he's a showman, and he uh, he has been basically um, provoking different kind of incidents in order to be able to um, uh, to, to to stream that and to pro to um, produce a show on his own um, reality uh, t TV. Uh, his main uh, digital channel is Facebook. Um, his communication has been strongly anti-elitist, always on the side of the people against uh, wicked uh, political elites. He adopted the, uh, the language of younger uh, generations 
and uh, his uh, entire um, social media discourse resembles one of, uh, of, uh, of an influencer rather than a politician. So he was able by, uh, he was labeled by, uh, by scholars and pundits, a reality TV star, uh, celebrity style, celebrity politician. Uh, our famous um, journalist called him a good television or Jerry Springer of Croatian politics. Even New York Times wrote about him and they called him a Trump-like figure because, because he, like Trump, is a political outsider who uses social media and attention-grabbing attacks on opponents. So um, he branded himself as a showman, political showman, and basically a, a celebrity politician, as, as we, as we uh, called him. He understands the power of the show, and he um, argued that if media is ready to make a circus and a show, I'm ready to be a clown and have fun with them. So he was ready to call himself a clown. He also said, if I wanted to be serious like other politicians, I could be, but that wouldn't be me and you wouldn't be talking to journalists interested in what I'm saying because I would be boring as, like everybody else. So he understands uh, media frenzy for incidents, for show, and he knows, like most of other populists, how to abuse it. Uh, so they, GVZ, they basically demonstrated in back in 2015 and 16 uh, excellent uh, knowledge and the use of uh, digital media. They uh, they were uh, posting more than anybody else, and they were really able to use uh, digital media to to build their um, to build their uh, network and to attract uh, uh, their um, their uh, supporters. They were very successful in uh, both in uh, 2015 and 2016 snap parliamentary election. Uh, nevertheless, they were less uh, they were less uh, successful in uh, 2019 parliamentary election, and um, and uh, also not very su successful in 2020 parliamentary elections. Meaning that they're uh, that their fame has um, uh, basically faded. Another party also uh, very briefly uh, that's important in this respect is MOS uh, that uh, initially uh, started as a network of, uh, of local, of local uh, politicians and local political options and they very, very, um, uh, uh, very skillfully used um, a digital media to, uh, to uh, to basically uh, to build the network, to connect these uh, scattered local uh, political capital into a national, one unique, uh, unified um, uh, brand. So um, uh, digital media played a very significant role in uniting their scattered political capital and translated it into a unique political uh, product. Uh, they are still very powerful on Croatian political uh, political scene, and they uh, did very well in 2015-16 and 2020 parliamentary uh, elections. Not very good in 2019 European elections. This guy is probably the most interesting. So, this guy was a no-name, basically almost a no-name before before 2019 European elections. He campaigned on two things. He campaigned on himself, me, um, as uh, uh, me as someone who is going to save you from, of course, corrupt elites. And one, one issue only: corruption or anti-corruption. So uh, he almost he had no campaign in mainstream media. He campaigned almost exclusively online, and Facebook was his main um, main uh, campaign channel. So uh, his slogan in 2019 was every mafia meets its end. And uh, he said that uh, European elections are just the first step towards him becoming a president and eventually prime minister. So he wanted to be everything. Um, and uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't, as I said, almost, uh, he wasn't almost, uh, he wasn't present basically in the mainstream media, but he was present only on Facebook. Um, and uh, run a very, very successful Facebook uh, campaign. Um, interesting thing about his campaign was that he, um, he never uh, spoke in first person, but his, uh, his um, Facebook page, Citizens for Mislo 
Kolakovic uh, was supposedly established by citizens, so it's always someone else talking about him, talking how he, how great he is, how wonderful he is, and how he is going to save uh, Croatian uh, people. His every Facebook post starts with a disclaimer share, which has uh, contributed also to broad organic reach of his messages. He was very, very skillful in targeting and micro-targeting um, uh, his audiences. He got um, as many as 8% of votes in European elections only with his Facebook campaign and uh, mainly with this page, Citizens for Kolakusic, and he was almost uh, uh, he was almost completely unknown before pres uh, parliamentary elections, and uh, he managed to, 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 to get a seat in a European um, a parliament. So that was really a, a big blow, a huge um, uh, surprise. So always um, this disclaimer, share. And finally, a uh, person uh, I also like to talk about is uh, our famous Croatian singer Miroslav Škoro, very famous in Croatia, who decided to run for president in 2000, um, in 2019, 2020. Uh, he was uh, very successful in his campaign, although he did not make it to the second round, of course he did not become president, but uh, he was very uh, successful and he uh, ended up third. Uh, his rhetoric was also entirely populist and interesting thing is about him that he's a basically a celebrity, a singer who, uh, who um, translated his uh, celebrity capital into political uh, success. Uh, and I focused, we focused uh, in our analysis on these three two people, so Pernar from Zivizit, Miroslav Škoro from, um, as a uh, presidential candidate, um, uh, celebrity on, in his own right, and Mislav Kolakšić to analyze their uh, digital communication in 2019-2020 uh, presidential um, election. So, uh, briefly, uh, Kolakšić, we label him and our conclusion is based on the analysis of his Facebook, Facebook posts um, uh, throughout the, that he was publishing throughout presidential campaign is that he's a populist messiah, that's how we label him. Because first he campaigned with the slogan for Mislav, it's either me or it's the same. So it's a very good uh, populist mantra, if you don't choose me, um, you're going to, uh, you're going to uh, have to live uh, with the, with the uh, corrupt and uh, horrible uh, elites. His populism was mostly expressed through his resentment towards elites, but significantly less so in terms of identification with the people. I singled out here two screenshots from his videos in which he is blaming the people for choosing uh, the, wrong, the wrong people, the, the politicians who destroyed Croatia. So basically he was not very inclined to identify with the people um, uh, so basically, uh, these two dimensions of populism, me with the people against the, uh, the elites, was not expressed that much in his case. He was very anti-elitist, but not that um, very much inclined to identify with the people. Uh, to the contrary, he blamed them for choosing the wrong, the wrong uh, people. So uh, his communication with the people was detached, very moralizing, and very... Um, intimidating. His uh, page, Citizens for Mislav Kolakusic again, was very aggressive and dramatic. He used a third-person format, which is very unauthentic and undermines what has, be, uh, what has uh, been uh, known as the socially mediated populism, which is uh, very authentic as Trump's populism, very authentic. His use of language simple language, vulgar language is very authentic. Authent uh, uh, Mr. Kolakusic's uh, Kolakusic language was not authentic. However, um, uh, it's very interesting that this third person format had huge impact, which uh, may suggest that this format, if managed and marketed properly, has significant campaign potential. So someone else talking on my behalf I believe you are familiar that um, we that in the UK 
um, yeah, during um, a general election, we had uh, examples of uh, these campaigns where uh, anonymous people were campaigning on behalf of, of the Conservative Party. And this was basically a huge scandal also in the UK. And uh, Kolakosic chose this to be his entire strategy. So uh, the, the goal of the page was to build a personality cult of this guy, of Kolakosic, and to promote his messianic mission of saving Croatia. Uh, the page was his, the Facebook page, was his main campaign uh, outlet and was basically designed and managed as a page created by fans who gather to worship their idol. Interestingly, on the uh, disinformation side, um, um, he was publishing very often uh, very manipulated uh, results of um, alleged online polls, surveys, which basically always were uh, very favorable towards him. He would do that um, by uh, mobilizing his army of supporters to vote in different um, web news um, uh, online surveys. So he, he and he would always uh, he would also always get very good uh, results there because he would mobilize his uh, supporters to vote and then he would publish that as um, as a regular poll and he would say polls are suggesting that um, of course I'm winning. Um, he established a couple of uh, websites that were, again, established allegedly by citizens to promote his, um, uh, his um, uh, candidacy. So um, his whole entire communi communication was uh, very uh, untrans intransparent uh, and very manipulative in terms of the data he was presenting there and information he was uh, presenting there. And uh, it could be labeled, a lot of the information he was publishing could be described as disinformation. Um, Bernard from Zid, so the showman, Jerry Springer, he was uh, the second, uh, he was also a very prominent candidate in the campaign. Uh, sorry, I didn't say Kolakosic, um, uh, he, um, he didn't do well in the in presidential elections. He did well in uh, parliamentary elections, but he didn't do that well in uh, presidential elections. Neither, neither did uh, Pernar in the end, but uh, his um, campaign was again very interesting in terms of, um, uh, of the, the things he was publishing. Uh, he relied mostly on videos. Um, and populist narrative, again, permeates majority of his uh, videos. The content of his pa Facebook page was super eclectic, very exhibitionistic, and again, resembled the page of a media influencer. He uh, could be, a, uh, a, uh, as Kolakusic, uh, he could be called a celebrity populist because he combines celebrity cues uh, with a populism. He is striving for celebrity status and he uses populist narrative to uh, appeal uh, to people. The, on the dis disinformation side, he was also um, very, um, uh, uh, he was an example of a politician who is using a different kind of disinformation uh, for his, um, to, to, to reach out to people. And um, in his case, one needs to mention conspiracy theories. He is a great disseminator and a great uh, reinforcer of different conspiracy theories. And he used his Facebook site to, um, to um, spread this different um, conspiracies. And finally, Skoro. So the last, the last uh, populist that we, uh, that we analyzed, um, is, um, as I said, uh, a celebrity, a famous uh, singer. He campaigned with the slogan, let's return Croatia to the people. It's now or never. So again, ask the people against um, uh, corrupt uh, uh, elites. He insists that he is responsible solely to the people and that he as a president uh, would, ensure, would uh, have ensured that people get greater part in decision-making through referenda, etc. cetera. Uh, his uh, campaign narrative was clearly populist with a strong right-wing slant. And it was mainly built uh, around his alliance with Croatian people and to a lesser degree on criticism of elites as a collective 
uh, enemy. Interestingly, although he entered political arena as a super popular singer, he tried to distance himself from his celebrity background. Uh, this is very different from his uh, international counterparts, uh, such as uh, Zelensky, uh, um, who built his whole um, campaign around his, uh, his um, show business identity. So uh, Shkoro, to the contrary, he tried to distance himself from his celebrity background, probably thinking that this is going to diminish his electoral chances and that he's going to be fined, um, that his uh, celebrity um, uh, uh, populism, um, uh, uh, celebrity populism um, uh, um, is going to only, uh, that, that, that people are going to find his celebrity background trivial in politics, not serious enough. So he was distancing. Uh, the, from his celebrity background. This is the only photo in his entire presidential campaign featuring him uh, with a microphone in his, um, in his original uh, um, uh, uh, environment. Um, uh, and uh, this was the, and, that, that, and uh, he used it because this is how television announced an, an, an interview with, uh, with, with him. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't have used it. So he didn't want to uh, didn't want to engage uh, engage uh, with, with that for better or uh, for worse. Uh, in terms of uh, disinformation, he was the most um, a straight candidate, uh, and he uh, he was and his campaign was the most was the most traditional uh, also on Facebook. And he basically he did not really use um, uh, disinformation. He was accused of. Um, using um, for, for his stance and for his positions, but he wasn't really uh, manipulative in the way that other candidates uh, were in terms of really distributing uh, disinformation or manipulating um, information. So uh, the, the conclusion here is that basically um, political outsiders since 2015 until today who irreversibly transformed Croatian political, political scene, strongly relied on three campaign uh, strategies. They all campaign on strong populist messages, which are confirmed to contribute to popula popularity of politicians who use them. Second, they all adopted distinct variants of very performative communication with Pernar being the biggest showman. And finally, they all use digital media in a very innovative and clever way to build their party infrastructure, mobilize supporters and target voters. This was all confirmed also in presidential elections, although populist politicians did not make it uh, to, the, uh, to, the, to the finish. They, they did not make it to the finals. Um, however, Shkoro, Shkoro's party did extremely well in uh, 2020 parliamentary elections. So basically the, 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 the political, uh, the, the capital, the strength he gained throughout presidential elections was used in parliamentary elections. He's the third biggest party right now. His party is the third biggest party in Croatia right now. So uh, it, it didn't exist before he ran for president. So that's the power of uh, populism, in, the, in his case, right populism uh, in Croatia right now. So uh, interestingly, uh, and related to populism and digital populism is another ph phenomenon that I, that I was mentioning um, uh, and I uh, touched upon um, when talking about these three, uh, these three candidates, and that's celebrity populism. So that's populism that combines the narrative of populism with celebrity cues in different ways. So, um, and uh, the, basically, um, the, 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 uh, the, the main uh, conclusion is that both celebrity populism and uh, digital populism will lead mainstream politicians to um, adopt some of the strategies and some of the styles that are being used by these politicians, primarily um, 
uh, more personalized, more vibrant, more dynamic communication, and the very intensive and very skillful use of the digital media. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mariana, you can stop sharing your screen. And uh, uh, let me uh, just uh, say that you can uh, now uh, start asking a, a question. I can see down in the Q&A section, because this is a Zoom uh, webinar, that we have one uh, okay. pending question. And uh, if, if someone of you, I mean, you can either, uh, there is a, a raise hand option, then you can raise your hand and we can, uh, uh, or you just, you, you can just unmute yourself and uh, here, Mariana, you can answer your questions. Okay, so populism in a world is, is a very, very broad thing right now. So uh, it's very hard to explain um, anything with everything in the world. So, um, and also populism. Uh, I can say a few words about Croatian populism, the specifics of Croatian populism. So it uh, has been on the rise since 2015. It existed before, but it wasn't as uh, systematic as it is right now. Uh, we have uh, we had two parties back then, so uh, which I mentioned today, most GVZ bridge and broke um, uh, um, bro broke this uh, duopoly or um, uh, of the two ma uh, two major pa major parties. Since then, uh, populist discourse has been um, quite uh, present and quite dominant in many aspects in in Croatia. Not only um, not only on uh, not only amongst politicians, but also in the media. So populist discourse is very strongly present in um, Croatian uh, political and public sphere. And the, um, the, the, the carriers of the discourse as I, are, yeah, are politicians, but also the media. And uh, um, aside from um, uh, GVC and most, I mentioned to, um, uh, to other most prominent uh, figures that embody this populist discourse politically, and that's Kolakusic and uh, Škoro and his uh, Domovinski pocket or homeland movement. You probably want to know about the, uh, the, um, the ideological slant of Croatian populist, uh, populism, I guess that was really the question. So we have a mix here and uh, the, the populists that I didn't mention basically here, and I was mostly talking about centrist and right-wing populism in Croatia. We also have um, uh, options that could be labeled left populist options that I did not mention in this presentation, but in parliamentary elections we had uh, lots of um, left and green uh, options that, whose rhetoric is also very populist. So we do have a, a mix right now of uh, different uh, populist or populist style options uh, in, uh, in uh, Croatian parliament and Croatian, uh, Croatian populist. Uh, however, the um, results of the 2020 uh, elections show that um, the, 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 the mainstream parties or the, the mainstream party um, uh, um, that has been um, governing Croatia the most is still the strongest uh, party in, in the country and it has a lot to do also with the handling of the, of the, of the pandemic and the whole this uh, coronavirus crisis. Mariana, hello everybody. Mariana, can I ask you a question? So it was very interesting presentation about our presidential election last year. But we had, as you mentioned just uh, uh, right now in the answer uh, for the first question, we had uh, subsequ subsequently uh, uh, normal uh, regular elections for the parliament. Can you connect uh, as, uh, let's say, uh, results of uh, presidential elections to as uh, as a prediction uh, uh, data to the uh, uh, this year uh, parliamentary elections, but of course, as you mentioned, uh, several ultra leftist or leftist populist parties arose from uh, uh, it, it, and came to the parliament. How do you predict their their lasting in the parliament? because we, we see that in last six months from elections or four, four months, they 
somewhat, uh, somewhat change their uh, attitude in, in, uh, with the, the, their uh, speeches in Parliament. And uh, I would say they are not so, uh, they, you, you cannot see so much activism in their speeches in Parliament as they showed before the elections. And uh, can you uh, use all this data to predict their, their life or their behavior in the future for these leftist populist parties? Parties, because they are now very influenced, and they uh, it is uh, it seems that they could, uh, how to say, in the future, uh, make coalitions with the Social Democratic Party, as we see from elections for their presidential uh, uh, presidency in the future. Yeah, in of the Social yeah, Democratic yeah, Party. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the biggest legacy of a <clears throat> yes, thank you. Mute yourself. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, the biggest legacy of uh, presidential elections is uh, definitely the rise of the homeland movement. So that's the legacy of the presidential elections uh, because of the charisma and the, and the success uh, of, um, of Miroslav Škoro. It was possible to build um, uh, a new party that basically um, that was um, quite successful. Uh, in, uh, in, in parliamentary elections. Um, the le leftist, um, green left coalition, how it's called, or um, which, which has indeed a very strong activist um, a slant in their um, uh, modus operandi. Um, uh, it, they're a very interesting phenomenon and we'll, we'll see how that's going to develop. You said, you mentioned, and I think that's your point, that they changed, uh, uh, that their discourse is uh, started to not discourse, but their style in a way. They also they they, they um, started to change a little bit since they uh, they won the won their seats in the in, in the parliament, and um, that's that's not uncommon with uh, with uh, parties who start as populist or um, uh, different activist options. Once they um, once they um, end up in parliament, and once they um, uh, end up having power, and they need to uh, to uh, they, they end up having a certain authority, uh, usually they start to uh, change their uh, discourse, and they 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 start to um, they um, their discourse becomes less populist and less activist. So um, they, they are still in the parliament. They don't have executive power yet. Um, and we'll see if that's going to shift at, at some point if uh, they get some um, executive um, uh, power. But right now their position is to challenge the, 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 the elites and to challenge the, the mainstream parties. That's their uh, main position. And they, um, they, are really, they, they are challenging the governing party more, mostly. And they are going to uh, they'll probably keep challenging um, each party that they perceived as um, oligarchs, uh, HTZ, probably Nistria, the, the, the long-standing um, governing party, and uh, all other parties that are being perceived as uh, Stardi, um, um, Stardi elites and uh, Stardi, um, um, yeah, so the, 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 the mainstream, ma mainstream. Um, the establishment, political establishment, that's what they do. And that, that's what they'll continue to do. And uh, I think that uh, their discourse, and that has been uh, spotted with many populists across the world, uh, will start to change once they get um, uh, executive power. Then, um, then they adopt more mainstream stances and positions. That's usual pattern, so. Hi, can I ask a question? Okay, uh, so next year in Croatia there are local elections. So these are all, uh, let's say, national populists from presidential and then parliamentary elections. Uh, are there any similarities between profiling, let's say, national populists and local populists? And what does it mean for, okay, we can see, we can see challenges uh, with, uh, with national populists on governments, and uh, are there any significant, I would say consequences, but uh, consequences are negative. Uh, so are there any, let's say, inputs in local government, uh, local govern governing with local populists? 
Yes, uh, you know, the question is with populism and, and, and uh, we asked that in, in somewhere, uh, uh, some of our papers, is populism necessarily bad? That's, you know, um, always the question because there are so many different types of populists and populist discourses. So um, uh, there are different, different and, and there are different understandings if populism is necessarily always bad because there are so many different types of populism uh, from um, Trump and Bolsonaro to um, Syriza in Greece and um, uh, et cetera, et and um, different creation populists. So that's the first thing. And I think uh, your question that um, in the local elections, I think that uh, the 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 um, uh, the uh, discourse that I think uh, Professor Boras mentioned a minute ago uh, of activism is going to be very strongly present because it's 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 trending right now. So um, it has um, it has a momentum, and I think that uh, populist narratives will be strongly present in terms of us against the elite on um, a local level in many different um, in many different uh, packages in many different ways with different ideological or even centrist slant because it's local elections so it's going to be a lot it's going to be about projects and you know um, the well-being of a certain local um, local um, a setting and uh, environment so uh, I think uh, we'll see lots of uh, lots of new 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 options because I think they uh, they gain strength and they are being with the success of similar options on the national level. So I think that will we'll witness a spillover from national to local level. Just a second, we are waiting for a question from Professor Prelog. I am here, but uh, it's just a question of technicality, so I can speak. Can, can you hear me all? Mariana, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. hope so. Yes, okay. I think we have seen here two quite different examples in the case of Bernard and Shkoro, because if you look at these two persons, one was already a celebrity, like Shkoro, and in his campaign, he actually won't not to mention too much time his celebrity status. In the same weather, in the same time, you had uh, Perner, who wasn't, he was a completely unknown person, but he tried actually to become, well, today we should say an influencer in some way, because he wanted that more and more people listen to him, read what he is uh, writing down, uh, looking for a widow and so on. So, I mean, it's interesting that from two different sides, actually, they started their campaign. One was from, you know, celebrity level, the another one, guy who tried to become a celebrity. And, but everything else, they used some same ideas, looking ideologically or this, you know, president of people, you know, guy who is representing in his party people. So, I mean, it's interesting that actually they met somewhere in the middle, but starting from different positions. That is my comment. Okay. Yeah. And there is, there is this whole uh, now theory. But, uh, mm, uh, the original paper we wrote is about celebrity populism, basically. We tried to clarify different types of, um, of uh, celebrity populists and show how uh, these two dimensions merge, celebrity cues and populist narrative into something that, um, that uh, translate into an attractive political uh, product very often. And uh, yeah, you, you're, um, you rightly notice that uh, one, one type of celebrity populist is a celebrity populist by origin like Skoro or Zelensky, and the other type is uh, is uh, basically um, people who come from a uh, sphere other than politics, enter politics, and then start adopting uh, celebrity cues to um, basically turn themselves into a political celebrity. And that's exactly what Bernard was doing. And also Kolakosic, but in a very different way, not in a showy way, but in a way of, uh, of trying to build, to, to present himself 
as um, as um, as an um, idol and uh, recruiting a group of, of fans who will be worshiping worshiping his persona in a very similar way a celebrity does with their fans celebrities do with their fans so that's very interesting there's different typology of um, um, in, uh, of incorporating celebrity cues into populist discourse so uh, and we argue that you know um, a celebrity cues amplify populist uh, discourse and uh, adding even more to the to the um, to the um, to the show di uh, a dimension of, of populist politicians and that th this may be very attractive as we have witnessed in many different cases from Trump's to Zelensky but also many other Jon Knar in Iceland and many other um, uh, politicians so uh, we believe this is something that deserves to be um, defined and discussed in its own right so celebrity populism as a phenomenon Thank you very much. And the uh, last question by Professor Ana Maria Musa. Sorry. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, it is, this is not a question. It's actually a, um, a comment because it is, uh, maybe uh, it's interesting for Croatia, but it has broader implications for scientific research on representation. So Croatian government is, uh, has an intention to decrease the number of councillors in local governments. Uh, and well, I'm wondering, and I think that it is an important uh, research question for political science and for communication science, whether this uh, decrease, I think it's about 20%. So instead of, for example, 15 councillors, you have 11 or 12, they're not sure yet. Or in Zagreb, instead of 50, there will be 42. Uh, so the question is whether this uh, decrease uh, will lead to basically uh, 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 more sound public policies, local policies, uh, uh, concrete results, uh, I mean results uh, and uh, uh, I would say uh, more um, uh, uh, established uh, uh, politicians gaining uh, a number of seats or, or uh, mayor positions or it will lead to more populism and uh, and uh, basically buying votes in in I mean in any any way for 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 the election. So basically, I think it's it it will it's yet to be seen what will happen. Although maybe the science already has some some ideas about that. Yes, uh, but you know, um, I think uh, that's um, uh, I think political science uh, has become very limited in explaining certain. Uh, certain things and I really believe it needs to cooperate with different um, areas of research not only media studies but also uh, celebrity studies cultural studies etc etc that kind of have maybe better uh, better not better but broader understanding of the media um, uh, and cultural matrix that we live in contemporary media um, and cultural matrix I think that's very important and that's also partly answers your question. The um, example of uh, Kolakosic that I kind of uh, touched upon today is a very um, also scary example because you have a person who is uh, unknown. You have a person who competes in European election without even mentioning European topics not one single time and who wins a seat in the European Parliament without even mentioning European topics, not once in the throughout the entire elections, and he wins a seat in European Parliament just because of his personal appeal and one issue, and that's corruption. And it's an empty signifier because he actually he, he never actually explained how he's going to tackle corruption, but that he kept on talking about corruption. So it's basically he sold his style, he sold himself as a as a and his personality cult to the people. And I think that's also possible on local level. And I don't think really that, that you know, that reducing the number, it may, it will have certain positive, uh, I think, be benefits, definitely. But I don't think that's gonna, that's gonna be in terms of, you know, presentations and, uh, and, the, and the stimulus uh, for the people, that people are going to vote differently based on issues and not on uh, styles or, you know, affection um, if, if these changes are being implemented.
development. And so I don't think that's not going to change much. I think that we're going in a, in a certain way of, you know, attraction style and appearance. Um, and I think uh, that's happening everywhere on all, every level. Uh, thank you very much. And I can see uh, one comment from Professor uh, Beschker in the comments area when he said that it should be said that the aggregation of right-wing populists led by Shkoro cleansed the conservative HDZ party of most of its former extreme right-wingers. So uh, thank you very much.